Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we feel honored you are here to see a rare collection of photographs. Uh, let me introduce you uh, to you, uh, Mr. Yaya Ghaznubi. He's been a uh, famous collector of uh, these uh, rare historical photographs. He's been uh, teaching sports management and has been a business manager for running the events. So the rest of uh, information about himself or his endeavors, uh, you may ask him do during the presentation. Uh, some of the questions which I, I felt while going through this exhibition was uh, the motivation, the level of motivation with which he has archived all those photographs. So, Mr. Ghazan, uh, what was the real passion or the motivation behind this, this terrific endeavor? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Asian Study Group and the management of uh, Kush Khas over here for providing me all the facilities and arranging it so well. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you see, uh, Everybody has a hobby, like I was talking to one of the young girls over here, long time back, people used to have hobby of uh, collecting stamps. But now, because of the emails coming in, stamp hobby looks at things of the past now. Similarly, I, I was in sports all my life, and uh, it all started once I came across a Pakistani athlete, and uh, he won a gold medal at uh, the 1954 Asian Games in Manila. And uh, I saw him in a very bad shape. And it really touched my heart. And uh, he was looking a job for his son. And uh, he asked me to get a job for his son as a helper. We used the lowest paid employee in Pakistan Railways. And I was very touched. And I said that, look at these cricketers. They're earning so much. And look at our past heroes. They are just dying like an like a unknown soldier. And then I thought that nations who don't respect their heroes, one day they'll never have heroes. And uh, we have to respect these people. Because when you look at their Look at them, all they gave us a message of healthy living. And uh, the passion started slowly that I said, let's archive our rich sports heritage. And our heritage doesn't start from 1947. To be very honest, all these sports are modern sports. They came with the advent of the British over here, like tennis, athletics, football, hockey, squash. All these came with the British Army over here. You know, it's a, it's a very difficult art. How do you spend your pastime? Some people sleep in the afternoon, and <laughs> slum people don't sleep in the afternoon. It's a very difficult question. Well, uh, it's an art to use your time. And uh, it has been a very, very taxing hobby, but I personally feel where you have a passion, you can always take out time. And uh, the gentleman sitting in front of me, Kanzai, we used to go together on Sundays. So me and him, we went to his uncle, and then he in turn searched the house where they first came in 1947. And from we, then we searched the box, and from that box we got this photograph. And then I got it printed from Fortec, the photograph behind with the football player with the voice track for New Delhi heroes. So that is how I got, you get, I got one photograph. And there's another photograph, I couldn't bring it over here. This is of John F. Kennedy with uh, Jahangir Khan. And Mr. Aziz Ahmed, he was then the Pakistan ambassador in uh, USA. And I saw this photograph in England. And for that photograph, believe me, I had to write to the White House. And they in turn, in turn got in touch with the photographer he had passed away, there was no record. And then I got in touch with Mr. Aziz Ahmed's son. As somebody told me he's living in Australia. And I couldn't uh, get in touch with him. Then finally, I got in touch with Azam Khan, Karla Khan's father, because he was in that photograph. He was living in England. It took me six months to get one photograph. 
I'd like to tell you something about hockey, which is the national sport of India and Pakistan. Very briefly, that uh, hockey, of course, came with the advent of the British Empire over here. They used to play hockey in the pattern of football. Like this, you have long passes. And the sickle of the hockey was quite long, you see. Like you've seen the photograph behind of uh, the 1928 uh, hockey team. So 1928 was the first year in India, despite being a colony, was uh, they said that you're going to go and go in Olympics. And that team was named as the British Indian Hockey Team. And uh, so there was no funds for the team, and there was no coach of the team. And uh, they said there's no money. And uh, they went to some to a rich Muslim. He said, how many Muslims in the team? That's only two. He said, why should I pay? They said to, they went to some Hindu. They said, how many Hindus in the team? They said two. He said, why should I pay? Similarly, they had with the Christians and uh, Sikhs and everybody. Ultimately, it was a Tata group which paid for the first Indian cricket, first Indian Olympic contingent to travel by ship from here to Amsterdam. But before Amsterdam, the Indian hockey team went on a pre-Olympic tour to England. It's Feroz Khan who gave me these photographs. When he, in a life at 100, he was the oldest living Olympic gold medalist. His father has been the Air Force Chief, Farooq Feroz Khan. And he told me something very interesting. I'd like to share it with you. He said, we went from here on a ship. And when we reached England, you see, the first match we played, we lost by two goals. Because we used to play on a fleet shoes, like a Bata old-fashioned shoes. And we never had seen the spikes, running shoes and all that. He said, we lost the first match by 2-0. And he said, the rest, rest of the tournament, rest of the stay, we won every match. But every time it was reported in the newspaper, they said, the Indian, the visiting Indian team, which won, which lost the first match 2-0, went on to win this match. And he said that this was the first time that the Europeans ever saw the Asian style of hockey. But that's a different discussion how it developed it because the people were not very fast as the English people and the terrain was slow. So the ball used to travel slow. So they had to retain the ball till the time person reaches point A to point B. So they did develop an own style, quite the Asian style. So he said from there, we went to Amsterdam for the 1928 Olympics. And during their stay in England, which was a pre-Olympic tour, the English national team said, we cannot play with you. Your standard is the club team. You've come here to learn. So you can't play against the national team. So from there, they went to Amsterdam. And in the semi-final, they were playing, there was a match was between England and, England and Germany. And they, the German team asked them to coach them how to play well against England. But that's another interesting story. But in the end, in the final match, India won 3-1. That was in 1928. And Holland were very happy that India only scored one goal against them. And from there onwards, India went on to win six successive Olympics. That's a world record by itself. Then they lost to Pakistan in 1960 at Rome. And it was very emotional for Mr. Feroz Khan because he was a member of the team which won the gold medal in 1928. And he was the head of the Pakistan Hockey Federation, heading everything in 1960. So it was a very emotional moment for them. So we can talk a lot of things, but if you see the photographs, you see, you've seen uh, uh, Mr. Shokat Ali dressed in a cricket outfit. This is a message for people of today who, who claim to be social pundits and who are very Islamic scholars and all that. Look at them, how interested they were in sports. I was here to see a Maulana Saab playing cricket or hockey. So if you see behind, Maulana Altaf Hussain Holly was the official scorer of Aligarh cricket team. Now, look at Maulana Holly, and you have seen Maulana Holly, Maulana Hasrat Mahani, and Nawab Vakar mulk So the message for is that, look at these people, you see. We have seen they, them. They were pretty old. No. Uh, they, they went on to the make a yeah. country, and they fought for the country, and they were very interested in sports. So it's a message for today's people who follow that let's sports is something which can really bring a lot of wonders Mr. Ghazmi, uh, where did you earlier hold your exhibitions and which one do you feel was the best well in in, in pakistan i had uh, i've had four but the the best one was if i'm sure cricket is very popular over here and people follow cricket and uh, 
that was in the Lost Cricket Museum. And I've seen Mr. Hassan Mani sitting in front of me. Thank you, sir, for coming. And Mr. Hassan Mani would bear with me that Lost Cricket Museum has got a lot of charm. And uh, the greatest moment was to hold an exhibition of my cricket collections at the Lost Cricket Museum. And then I was fortunate enough that Adam Chadwick, the curator, he, we worked together. And I, I put a photograph of Kadi Azam, which you see over there, watching a cricket match through the courtesy of uh, Lord's Cricket Museum. This picture is permanently now placed in the Lord's Cricket Museum. So I'm very happy to have a photograph of Kadi Azam in Lord's Cricket Museum. And uh, the, it was really, Lord's Cricket Museum is something you can talk and talk and talk about it. And then I had an exhibition in Paris, which was in uh, Chantilly, that was during the World Polo Championship. Uh, one exhibition in Dubai and one in Sharjah. But of course, the one in Lord's Cricket Museum was the best one. <laughs>